Hello everybody, uh, I'm Jed Stevens, I'm here to teach a little bit of what I know about Godot. Uh, it's a pretty cool game engine, uh, I'm sure everyone watching this already kind of knows what it is and how to add nodes and uh, how it kind of works. Uh, so I'll kind of skip a lot of the basics, but I mostly want to focus on making a menu screen uh, while thinking of dead space. So I've pulled up this uh, template. It's from Rambo, I guess. And uh, I've segmented it in half and half, uh, vertically and horizontally. Uh, and the one thing is along the vertical split, you can see that one half of the screen is completely empty with no UI elements, and the other uh, contains pretty much all of them, apart from this little uh, thing. But uh, that's an exception that we can we can break specifically if we need to. Um, but mostly we can say that the anchor for all of these elements is almost sitting like right in the middle here. If I just bring a brush in. It's kind of sitting like right there. Uh, and they seem to all be weighted on that line right there. Um, which this line actually seems like it's kind of the center of this. So basically what we want to do is split the screen in half and center things on half the screen. Uh, that doesn't seem too hard and it's not. Uh, and the way that you really do that is you focus on two main elements right here. I have the center container and then the expander. The spacer is uh, just this little box here and that's just to buffer out, uh, buffer out the side from making sure that it never touches the side exactly because uh, it doesn't look good when it touches the side so we never want that to happen uh, so we just put that there and the way that we make sure that this is a spacer is we put a minimum size uh, and that will m ensure that you're spacing it out in that direction uh, and it's not going to be compressed um, so I have all of these in an hbox container which is going to line them out in a horizontal line uh, then in here I have a center container, which is going to center all of the UI elements, and an expander. An expander and the spacer, these have the same logo, and they're meaning they're just a control node. Uh, and you can see that when you go to add a node, that they are right here. So a control node is just the base node for all the GUI components, as it says right here. Uh, it's pretty easy to find what you're looking at in this engine. Uh, so I'm not going to go too much over that stuff. Uh, but basically it's just the most basic element and you just tell it to make itself bigger by using the size flags. Uh, using expand will make sure that it uh, grows to as big as it is allowed to be in its parent container, which is this big, uh, bigger box. Uh, now for the actual UI elements, what I've got is uh, just a VBox container, nothing crazy. Uh, and that's just going to sit inside a center container, which is going to center it basically on... Whoa! It's going to center it on half the screen, pretty much. So when we go to make this bigger... Oh, did I lie? I totally lied. Okay, so this is not going to be centered on half the screen. I don't actually have it set up perfectly. Uh, so what we want to do instead is make sure that these are both the same size. And this thing, I think, also needs to be on expand. Yeah, there we go. And that is it. Now it's going to be centered on half the screen. And you can see it move around a little bit nicer now. So, that's pretty much it. It's nothing crazy. You can really use the simple elements to make something cool. Uh, and those elements, the center container, the control, and the VBox container, lets you really pick where you want these elements to go. Uh, now what elements are we exactly talking about? Uh, it's just a texture frame, nothing crazy. This is, I don't really enjoy using the uh, Godot text too much. Uh, I prefer just using GIMP. It really just lets you have more control over what you're actually looking at. And I'll show you how to do this quick text effect uh, using GIMP and how to pull it in and, and add a button essentially. Um, so the button is the same thing, it's just a texture button. This just means it's going to hold different states. 
Nothing crazy. It's a lot better than using the default button class, I think, because you can control exactly what it looks like and get a really nice solid UI look for your game instead of just using the uh, the default button class, which you can theme, yes, but it doesn't doesn't allow for the same range of look at all. Uh, it, you just it's not there. I would rather make a button like this. So what I would do is if I want to make a credits button, just type the word credits here. We're going to pick the same font that I was using, it's Carton 6, that is a free font. Uh, I can't remember where I got it from, but I, I'll try to link it in the description. I'll, I want to link all the assets in the description, and I will hold myself to that. Um, now I can't remember what the button size was for the old button, so I'm just going to open as a layer the this one right here. Okay, so the credits is a lot bigger. I'm thinking it was probably 64, I think was the size. Yeah, yeah that was the size, okay. So the way I just do this, and a lot of people have uh, some trouble in GIMP and, and making stuff look good, and it doesn't have to be uh, all that difficult. Um, you can make it look pretty good pretty quick as well. In GIMP, it's just not Photoshop, and that's what people seem to trip up over. Uh, you just have to think of it differently. So this isn't really a GIMP tutorial, but just more a uh, just how to do this kind of effect quickly, I guess. You want to select path from text, uh, from path, and then da -da -da -da. I just grow this. It's nothing crazy. That's just how to make a normal bo border in uh, GIMP, I guess. I think I had it on two the last time I did that. Uh, and then we'll just make it, fill it in with some white, drop that to the bottom. Yep, and that looks good. And then I'll just make it so that I can auto crop these. Boom. We'll export this as. Like here, we're gonna go. This is the credits button. Oh. Alright, and then basically the easiest way to do this, uh, so for those who don't know, to add a node, you go click add node or control A, uh, a much faster way of doing it with the keyboard. I'm going to pick a texture button and you're going to load in your texture with this right here. So to get it centered, uh, where did I do that? Yes take off the fill flag so it's not going to fill its parent uh, and it just wraps its own content um, and there you go that's how it's going to be like that now if we try to use this menu uh, before we use this menu I want to also add that there is a scene going on in the background the same as the uh, if we load up GIMP again the same as the Rambo scene there's just 3d objects going objects going on in the background and this is a just quick little demo of how to add those 3d objects and you just literally add them as a child of the menu node and you add oh, and you add a camera and once you have a camera and you can pick your view by previewing and moving the camera in your scene uh, you know I have a little monkey in a base there a little Suzanne model uh, and yeah, there's nothing that crazy about it. So you just give it a run. And I have some code to rotate this as well. And this button, this play button, is a little bit more advanced because it has the other images, as you probably saw. And that's just a matter of changing those colors. I All I did was fill it with black for the hover and invert the original for the pressed. You can probably think of way cooler things than that. Uh, this is just what I did for the tutorial. And you'll find, as well, because we've implemented that expanding uh, feature about the UI and that the UI is going to be where we want it to when it expands, now that we expand it, it's right in the center. 
and it looks like a pretty darn good menu screen. Um, the only thing that I'm doing that's a little bit special is in the script. Uh, and uh, to add a script, you can just go down on the top node, go new script, but I've already added one. So to go to a script that's already been added, boom, you go here. You can call it whatever you want. There's a little text box. I'm sure you guys have already figured it out. Um, and all I do, this is a quick little shorthand for making the size of a UI element the full screen size. And that will just, it's pretty easy. It's just get the size of the viewport, get wrecked, uh, and then the size, and you just set the size of that. Uh, now to rotate the Suzanne model, pretty easy. We want nothing to be, so we want the whole monkey head and the scene to appear right here. Therefore, we want to space that out. Uh, we want to make sure that the elements never touch the edge, so we space it out. Uh, we want to make sure that these elements never get too close, we space it out. It's You just make sure that you give everything the appropriate space in between itself to make sure that it looks good, and you'll be fine. And you can do that by giving things a minimum size or changing the size flags. Uh, composite that with a 3D scene, boom, you have a whole menu screen uh, really, really quickly. Uh, now, how do you make the buttons do something? This kind of goes into a little bit of scripting, and it's not anything too crazy. You just want to connect the button to the top level, and we want to go on the play button pressed. Regardless of whatever this is actually called, we want it just to be on the play button pressed. We're going to want it to, right now, we'll just go print, play in the game. Um, but realistically, we want it to take it to a new scene where we're going to have a some sort of like game going on, uh, and we'll just have like a test cube and a camera right now. Nothing crazy. Maybe a light. up in here and we'll save this as the game dot uh, tscn and when we go back to the script for those who don't know the way that you change a scene is you go get tree change scene and then you just load the path uh, and for those who don't know the res prefix that just refers to the game folder and all of your resources, the, res the resource folder. Yeah, so now when we run this, make sure it resizes. Oh, where's that quote going? Now that is, that's an interesting way of getting resized. What is going on? Oh, it doesn't move for some reason. Interesting. Uh, the label is under, oh, why is that, no, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, okay, whoa, I don't know how that left there. There, okay, that's much better. Okay, I don't know what happened. And it takes us to the game. Uh, nothing crazy, I didn't really put in any screen transition, so maybe you wanna do that. Uh, the way of thinking of that, I think, is uh, starting an animation player's animation on the play button, and then when that animation is done playing, uh, that's when you activate the change scene, versus just the play button change scene. Uh, and that's not too hard to do. We'll go into a whole tutorial of that probably as well. Um, but basically, the idea is disable all the buttons and play some animation, uh, and then change the scene when you when you fade to or you when the screen is black or something like that. That's a pretty good time to do it. Or present them with a loading screen and load all your assets and and whatnot. Uh, either way that is just invoked in the script. Uh, so as your game gets more complex, you can change things uh, that are relevant 
to your game and about how it starts just in this little function and this is such a tiny piece of code it's pretty cool that you can get something going this quickly and this easily uh, in Godot and GIMP they're both free it's like come on you, that's pretty cool alright uh, well hopefully this is helpful um, I'm going to probably make more tutorials if they if this is helpful uh, I got a bunch that I was gonna make so I don't know hopefully this is helpful uh, have a good day and I hope you learned something